All right, y'all. So I'm here for Love and Hip Hop New York. This is season eight, episode six. Um, the episode starts off with um, Rich and Self, you know, the last two members of the Creep Squad, <laughs> you know, meeting up. Um, I think they were like at a restaurant or a bar or something like that. And, you know, Rich is telling um, Self about Navarro and him being an entertainment lawyer. And now he's trying to do artist management and, you know, how Anais is his artist. And, you know, Rich is also telling him about um, how he met Anais, you know, um, his first time meeting her was on her photo shoot and you know he claims he was on his best behavior he was being a good little boy and she was the one who was all up on him and the next thing you know she slid into his dms to meet at the hotel motel holiday inn that they was at last on, you know that they was at on last week's episode and you know he's like but the dilemma is that she has two kids and a husband and south is like uh yeah the husband's gonna kill you <laughs> and i ain't gonna lie and i used his husband look like he don't mind getting his hands dirty so uh yeah you better watch yourself rich okay so, you know, um, self is like, you know, she got a commitment through God. Like you couldn't, you know, been creeping with all these single girls is out here and everything. But, you know, Rich feels like he needs to tell Navarro because of the fact that he considers Navarro to be like a brother. And I used to supposed to be his artist and blase blase. Then we get uh, Mo and Remy. They're at a bar. And, you know, um, Mo is telling her about how, you know, the son went on the internet and found out about the cheating and da-da. And I'm like, I'm about sick of hearing about this bullshit, okay? I'm sick of it. But, you know, she further goes on to tell about how um, Carl took a lie detector test and he failed. And, you know, she's hurt because, like, you know, it, remind, it reminds her of the pain that she's been through in the past with other men. And, you know, she tells Remy about the meeting with Dr. Jeff. And, you know, Remy invites her to her grand opening of her store in North Carolina, you know, just for Mo to get away and to, like, you know, clear her head, clear her thoughts um, or whatever about what she wants to do with Carl. So then we get Yandy and Bianca. They meet up you know, under some bridge. And um, Yandy is like, you know, why did you have to pop off like that, you know, and everything? And, you know, Bianca is like, because, like, you know, Jonathan came there, you know, just popped up out of nowhere. And, you know, I didn't know him like that. And he's in the period, you know, spreading these lies and da da this, that, and the third. And Yandy talking about some, I'm going to handle Jonathan um, the way I need to handle him. But now, right now, I'm talking about you and everything. This dad and the third. And, um, she's telling Bianca, you don't know who was there, who was watching, and you don't care about your brand right now. And Bianca, she starts to tear up and everything. And, you know, Yandy is like, I can't keep on going on like this. And, you know, uh, Bianca, she feels like, you know, people don't understand her and like they could just never rock with her. You know, I guess she feels like people are too quick to kind of give up on her and everything but it's like i mean come on bianca this is like your third season up here like you know at this point that your temper is an issue and it kind of gets into your way of greatness you know what i'm saying like i told you last week from one hot head to another you need to work on it you know what i'm saying um you need to work on it because you never gonna get to where you want to be you just popping off all the goddamn time you know what i'm saying um it's just not gonna happen um, she's saying how she really don't have no money. Like every time she does get money, it goes to bills and school and da, da, da. And Yandy says, you know, pretty much she's letting her go on the business side of things. And, you know, um, Bianca is just kind of like, you know I mean, you know, it is what it is because, you know, Yandy, let's, let's, you know, let's get on Yandy for a second. Yandy, you really won't do nothing for that girl's career any goddamn way. You was doing all this clowning around with um, Mendeecee's baby mamas. Now you up here this season with Judy and her bullshit. And it's just, 
you wasn't really doing nothing for her career any goddamn way. You know what I mean? And Bianca also talks about, like, the double standards or whatever. You know, like, oh, it's okay for, like, dudes in the industry to have these tempers and these attitudes. And, you know, um, they can get away with it. And how Yandy has had male artists, um, <coughs> Jim Jones, who has, you know, temperamental issues. And she pretty much kind of let them get away with it and everything. And I felt Bianca... You know, I felt Bianca on that. And I felt like Yandy, you sitting up here talking about something, you going to handle Jonathan the way you going to handle him. But you knew he was coming to that meeting. So what are you talking about? You knew beforehand that he was going to come there and tell that he told um, you this bullshit or whatever. So, like, what are you talking about? You know what I mean? I felt like, if anything... You should have just had, I mean, if you was going to have Juju there, that that would have been okay because, you know, it genuinely seemed like she was trying to mediate the situation. But to have Jonathan there, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, come on now. Like, that was bullshit. That was bullshit to me. Like, you know, if you consider that to be your friend and everything, you know, Bianca to be your friend, you know, um, outside of her being your artist, why didn't you sit down and have a conversation with her without him? So it's like, yeah, Yandy, you full of shit too, but I mean, whatever. But like I said, you know, as far as Bianca, you know, girl, Yandy really wasn't doing nothing for your career anyway, but you got to work on your temper. You got to work on it. But um, anyway, so we have Rich and Navarro. They're, you know, golfing and, you know, Navarro talks about how the issues with him and Ashley are better. But now it seems like Anais is not as motivated as he is. And, you know, um, then he goes into how he was at, like, um, some court case or whatever. And he gets a call from his mom. And um, he steps out to take the call and finds out that his dad passed out um, for, like, two hours and everything. I'm like, well, damn, where the hell was she at? For two hours, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause she, you know, he was saying that she, um, that he was passed out, his dad was passed out on the kitchen floor for two hours. And I'm like, well, damn, I mean, where was she at? <laughs> you know, but anyway, so his dad has diabetes. And, you know, we all know that Rich has diabetes and everything. And, you know, he tells Navarro that because Navarro didn't know. And, you know, he's talking about how he had an episode himself and everything. But Navarro says, you know, um, it just kind of, it was like a scare for him. So now every time his mom calls, he feels like he got to pick up the phone, you know. And, um, you know, he says that his dad, you know, was, you know, going to be fine and everything. And, you know, um, Rich decides that he's going to put the Anais conversation on the back burner until it's a better time to talk about it. So speaking of Anais, we get her and Jonathan. And um, it, this is a pretty much... Let's try this again. You know, I really don't want to lose you as a friend type of conversation. You know, so pretty much Jonathan is like, you know, he is the one who initiated the meetup. And um, pretty much he apologizes. You know, he felt like he took it too far and everything. And he was a bad friend and he picked his career over her. And, you know, um, or instead of being there for her and, you know, um... I kind of was just like, well, did she apologize for, like, you know, saying all of that shit in front of your family? <laughs> like, you know, all about the whole orgy, you know, did she apologize for that? Did she apologize for her shit and shit that she was doing and saying? Like, yeah, you know what I mean? But, um... She, you know, pretty much, you know, forgave him and they, you know, crying and all this other carrying on that they was doing. Um, and she's like, you know, um, these um, industry people are these industry people, but I'm going to always be your friend and da, da, whatever, whatever. So they start to talk about, you know, Jonathan dating like this new guy and everything and how he's a musician and how he pretty much feels like um, a side bitch to um, his music. <laughs> And, you know, Anais is like, well, I'm kind of going through the same thing with my husband right now, you know, um, you know, um, you know, and she starts to get into rich dollars and how she's kind of messing around with him. And, you know, Jonathan tells her to be careful because he's a creep and once a creep, always a creep, pretty much. So then um, we're at the grand opening of uh, Remy's store in um, North Carolina. I still say 
she should have opened it up. She should have at least, oh, well, opened up the first location in New York because, you know, Pap, he was talking about how, you know, she needed to open up another location, but she was talking about doing baby steps or whatever. But I think that um, she should have did it in New York first and then maybe expand it to, like, other, you know, places. But, hey, it's here now, so, you know. But anyway, so... Her and Mo, they're talking about marriage and everything and how it's hard and blase, blase. Next thing you know, Carl pops up with a star stalkerish look in his damn eyes. <laughs> and, you know, Remy is like, yeah, let me go talk to Pap um, about what's going on just in case some shit pop off. So, you know, um, he's like, I mean, she's like, you know, how did you find me and everything? And, you know, Carl, Carl he's like, because we got trackers on our phones. I'm like, oh, my God. I never understood that, but I mean, okay. But anyways, so um, Mo and Carl, they go outside to talk and it didn't take much for him to like get back in her good graces pretty much if you ask me. Because she was smiling from ear to ear because of the fact that, you know, he came all the way to North Carolina um, to tell her that, you know, it's them against the world and he want to put everything behind them and blase, blase full of shit but whatever so um Remy and Pap they you know were in the back or whatever pretty much having a conversation about um the IV um the I um FV treatment it, I always feel like I say it wrong is it IVF or IFV y'all know what I mean um the treatments or whatever and um she tells him like you know yeah like you know I'm, you know go ahead and pick a doctor out and we can go from there so um yeah, that pretty much was that with that whole scene. So then um, we have Jaque and Bianca. And I think they were at, they was at Jaque's food place or something like that. I'm, I can't remember. But, you know, Bianca doesn't really know if anybody else has told Jaque about Sophia. So she proceeds to start telling him about it. Like, I, you know, even though he already knows. And as she's telling him, Sophia walks in. And Jaque instantly confronts her about the video shoot. And she's like, well, when you're unavailable, I have to, you know, start making decisions on my own. And he's like, how many times you call? And um, because, you know, I would have seen it. And she's like, I called three times. And he was like, wow, you know, three times. And then you were laying right next to me and you ain't say shit about this um, photo. I mean, about this video shoot. And he's like, you know, uh, so you rocking with James Delane now? And, you know, she's like, what are you talking about? And, you know, he's like, you going back on your word? You know, like, what if I would have did something like that? And Bianca, she interjects. And she's like, uh, you're not because you're loyal. And Sophia looking at her like, bitch, who asked you? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, Bianca, just stay out. You know, this ain't your, you know, stay out that shit. So, um... Then she talks about, you know, uh, Mariah Lynn um, attacking her or whatever. And she calls her like a scraggly rat or something like that. And Bianca was like, uh, come again, what you call her? And I guess Sophia don't know that them two are friends because, you know, she repeated herself like it won't nothing. And um, Bianca's like, yeah, I don't like this energy that's going on. So let me go. <laughs> okay. And um, before I have to drag this bitch. So, um... He's like, well, why did Mariah put her hands on you this day and the third? And she was like, um, I don't know, because she's intimidate, intimidated by me or whatever. I'm like, yeah, I don't think that's it. I think she was alarmed to see you there because uh, she thought that she was going to be the leading lady in James' video. You know, she thought that her and James was, you know, supposed to be rocking. You know what I'm saying? Especially because she came down there to try to give him another chance after he cut up at her event and then she see you there and like i told you guys before i think the whole talk when she, when sophia has said let me talk you know that kind of set mariah off it wasn't right though because like i said you know what i'm saying you really need to be mad at uh james delane but um yeah, you know, I think that's what kind of set mariah off but not the fact that she was intimidated by you like a girl by Okay, <laughs> but anyways, so um, 
she's like, so how are we going to fix it or whatever? And he was like, I don't know. You tell me. Like, you the one who fucked up. Like, what are you talking about? And, um... He, she's like, well, just let when you find out, let me know. And he's like, no, you won't figure it out. You know what I'm saying? I hate when um, a person messes up or whatever in the relationship and they be the one to ask, well, how can we fix it? Bitch, you the one who messed up. You figure it out, motherfucker. <laughs> I hate that dumb ass shit. It should be pissing me off. Okay. So... Then uh, we get like a quick scene with Rich meeting up with his mom and everything. And, you know, he's annoyed by um, everything he has to do to, you know, keep keep in control of him dealing with diabetes and everything. You know, the life changes that he has to make. And, you know, they talk about certain family members that they had to bury due to diabetes. And, you know, his mom and him are getting emotional because... He don't want to have to call her to tell her he about to go. And, you know, um, yeah, it, it, it was a touching moment. It really was, you know, because, I mean, a lot of people deal with diabetes, especially in our community, in the, you know, um, African-American community. You know, a lot of people do deal with that shit. So, um, yeah, Rich, you know, through all your creeping and everything, please make sure you take care of yourself, okay? So, um, then we get Jonathan, um, he's, um, at this church with his guy or his boy toy, whatever he want to call him. Um, I think his name is Trent and, um, he's rehearsing at a church. <laughs> I don't know why, but yeah, he's rehearsing at a church and they met years ago, but they're now, they're just now like kicking it like that. So he's like, you know, like, why are we in the church and everything? You know, um, are you going to propose and all this other stuff? Like, is this the moment? And, you know, uh, Trent just kind of laughed and everything. And, you know, Jonathan thinks that they need to spend more time together. And, you know, um, Trent is like, you know, um, I want to, but I feel like it's an urgency for me to like, you know, get this music out and everything. And, you know, um, he, he don't want to just put himself out there as a gay man and this, that, and the third because people are looking for him to fail and blase, blase. And Jonathan, he wants to help him. Trent is prideful. He's like, you know, I don't really want you helping me because I don't want nobody to ever be like, oh, um, I'm using you and this, that, and third. And, you know, uh, Jonathan just feels like he doesn't want to waste his time if Trent is not going to fully open up to him. And Trent is like, I mean, it ain't going to happen in six months. And, you know, Jonathan is like, child, please, six months is like six six um years and gay years and everything. You know, like, I want to get married and, you know, this, that, and the third and everything. And they make an agreement to um for Jonathan to come to mo uh, more of his events or whatever. And Trent has to, you know, uh take him out on more dates and everything. So then we get James the Lame and Sophia. Um, he apologizes for the situation with Mariah. And she talking about playing along with him, you know, if it's going to help her DJing career. And this is like, nobody knows this motherfucker. So I don't know how it's going to help your uh, career in DJing, but okay. Um... He tells her he has like a thing for her or whatever. And next thing you know, um, it's this dog in the park that this lady is holding. And, you know, um, the lady is acting like it's her dog at first. And then come to find out, James Delane brought the damn dog for her. And um, he knew what type of dog she wanted to on top of that. So, um, She's saying, like, you know what, I have a boyfriend and everything, da-da. And pretty much James Delane don't have no regard for Jaquay. She thanks him for the puppy, and that, you know, that was that. So then we get Jaquay and Sophia, you know. Sophia, she's at the house with the dog. And Jaquay is coming up the stairs, and he sees the dog, and he's hype at first. Like, oh, shit, where you get this dog from? Then, so then she proceeds to tell Jaquay that she accepted the dog from James Delane or whatever. Like, he gave it to her, you know, uh, for the um, video shoot. And, you know, Jaquay is pissed. He's like, listen, you accepting gifts from, you know, from this nigga and everything. Like, you know, he instantly is like, you know, you know, get, get your shit out of my house. Get your shit out of my house because I already told you 
um, how the fuck I felt, and you still going to clown around with this nigga and everything. And, you know, um, she's telling him, like, stop, like, you know, um, the nigga corny and this, that, and the third, and, you know, um, she feels like he's overreacting and everything, and, you know, she's like, and then she's like, you know, you know what, well, fuck it, you know what I'm saying, like, I'll be back for my furniture, and this, that, and the third, and he's like, nah, you ain't coming back for nothing, and that pretty much was that with him, I mean, I really ain't mad at Jaquay, because, like, I mean, Sophia, like, you still dealing with this dude for what, and once again, who the fuck is James Delane? Don't nobody know his ass, so, I mean, like, come the fuck on. But, so, like I said, I'm not mad at Jaque. Maybe he might have been doing a little bit too much, but whatever. Um, <laughs> make sure you guys, um, did I want to say something else? Oh, yeah, we're going to see ne in um, next week's episode that she's going to be crying to James Delame about Jaque kicking her out and the dog getting sick or whatever. So, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Um... Make sure you share the video, share here, share there, share every motherfucking where, all right? And um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.